Jefferson. Excuse me, just yes. what is your reason for standing down? The um, the CCAC Construction Advisory Committee report. They may give, be giving us some. Um, they've been discussing West Campus. And, and what's your conflict of interest? Um, at this point, one of the programs that may move to West Campus is the main kitchen that's currently at Jefferson. And because I live across the street, that potentially could affect my property value, and therefore I have a presumed conflict of interest. So better be safe than sorry, so I'm going to stand down from that one. Um, <coughs> Moving forward <coughs> to the um, Jefferson School item. Do we have a motion from the board, Vice President Duran? Yes, I'd like to move to accept the recommendation of the Jefferson community to oh. change the name of their school. Thank you. To Vice President. I will second the motion. Second it by Solowski. We're now going to move into board discussion. Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of serious discussion, and I hope the audience will be as respectful of us as we um, have the serious discussion as I hope we have been of you. And board members, um, if we can try to take turns for the discussion, but if you have a quick follow-up, if you have a follow-up on something and that makes sense, please try to let me know and we'll try to organize it that way. Um, so let's open the discussion on this item. Director Slosky. Okay. Where to begin? <laughs> um, I think I, I, I'm going to restate what I stated on June 8th at, at our first reading of this. Um, just so people are clear about where I stand and so that I'm clear about where I stand as well. In my view, um, my own personal opinion about the name of Jefferson School is irrelevant. I have my own opinions, but my own opinion as a board member is secondary to my role as a board member. To me, my role here is to ensure that the process, the board policy in this case, was adhered to and followed. And if I believe that was the case, then my role, in my opinion, as a board member, is to ratify the decision of the site. That is, that is really the only thing I'm looking at. However, the last few weeks, I have received a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls. I've had a lot of conversations with people. And I have to admit, I've learned a lot about Jefferson, about this community once again, which I love dearly. Um, and I think in many ways, this has been a healthy discussion. In some ways, I see it as a divisive discussion as well, and I hope we all can get past that at some point and really sit down and listen to each other because I think at times we talk to each other, but we don't listen to each other. Um, I am struck tonight by the fact that I have heard from many, many people who I think in some cases justifiably have said that the decision-making body that is the site was too small a group of people and are now asking an even smaller group of people, that is five people up here, to make a decision. And I find that somewhat contradictory and ironic. However, I do in some ways understand the sentiment because I myself feel that the board policy is flawed and needs revision. However, I am not in any way suggesting that we change it halfway through process. I think that would be a mistake, and I think that would be disres disrespectful for the process that we indeed endorsed a year and a half ago. And I want to I want to point out to fellow board members, and I respect everybody's opinion up here because this is this is a complicated issue in many ways. If we wanted to make the decision ourselves, or we wanted another outcome, we should, have, we should have told the site a year and a half ago to stop what they were doing and revise the board policy at that point to allow the policy, to, the process to go on for a year and a half and now say 
you folks were wrong, you folks screwed up, whatever the, whatever the comments will be, I think would be disrespectful. I'm gonna, I am gonna support the site process. I believe the, our board policy was, fo was followed and adhered to. I have not heard anything compelling to tell me otherwise, and I do wanna point out that all three groups at the site, that is the students, the staff, and the parents, all voted for Sequoia. And that's what I will do also. Thank you. Other discussion? Student director, please. Um, I think that um, this discussion has, in many people's minds, become narrow rights and wrongs. Um, I think all too often we like to simplify things as doing the right thing and the wrong thing. And I think on both sides, um, People let, like to let themselves get, s get so comfortable with deciding between black and white, and that this is a complicated issue, and that there are many things involved, many people's feelings and hearts and minds and opinions are not right or wrong. They are part of who they are. These are, these are not things we could say, this person is wrong for thinking that they are hurt by by a name change. They're wrong by, and I think that, that, that this process has been a little upsetting in that, that it has caused that, but it's been very uplifting in that it has caused um, discussion. Um, and um, a few things I've noticed is that um, as a representative of students, um, the only person here elected by students, um, I find it, very upsetting that when students agree with you, you agree with their vote, and when students don't agree with you, you don't agree with them having the right to vote. I don't think that's the issue here. I don't think um, that that's fair to say. Um, I personally think that they always should have the right to vote. I think that adults as well as children have their own interests in mind when they vote, and they do so. Um, I think that the history has been discussed and that, that we've heard most, of thing, most things that are going to be heard. Um, but my vote is going towards, and I, I agree with many arguments on both sides. I just think that if some people feel very offended at, at going to school, then they shouldn't have to go to a school where they feel offended. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Director Rivera. Yeah, at the last board meeting, I, I indicated that I was going to vote against the change, uh, the name change, and in this meeting, I was going to explain why. And, um, you know, during the last few weeks, um, Actually, I have learned more about Jefferson than I, I really care for, but um, you know, there's been a lot of email, DVDs uh, that has sort of filled our mailboxes. And several issues have been raised both tonight, the last few weeks, uh, in, on emails. One of the issues was the issue of participation, of who should have participated. It was just limited to the small Jefferson community. They should have had a larger community participation, the, the fifth grade parents should not have voted, the kind incoming kindergarten parents should have voted. I, and the truth is that even though a lot of those arguments um, make sense, uh, that was not what the policy said. So in, in that respect, uh, you know, I, I cannot uh, say you know, this should have happened uh, because that was not on the policy. And I think we all agree that this policy was flawed and this policy needs to be changed. But the many people have come here to quote the policy, uh, but they also forget to mention that on point number nine, the policy says the board, the board will act on the petition. So that is what is coming to us tonight, a petition to change the name. It doesn't say that this board is going to rubber stamp that school's recommendation. We are following board policy 
And as part of that policy, we can reject the proposal that you bring forward to us. Really, it is not my fault that many people did not seem to have read the policy carefully or properly explain it to the kids that really it was just a recommendation and the school board was going to have the final um, say on this. Um, so, you know, when, when the letters state things like, um, you know, it is not the responsibility of the school board to honor their own policy and approve the new name, well, it is true that it is our responsibility to honor uh, the policy, but because the site voted for it doesn't mean that we have to, to do so. As, as, as a board, it is our responsibility to, you know, question and, and, and consider, you know, everything before actions um, are taken. Um, many times the community members come and ask us to question recommendations that come from the superintendent, recommendations that come from the administration, but now when the recommendations come from the community, well, those are sacred and we are not supposed to question those. Those are supposed to be approved because the site said so. Well, that's, that's not where I come from. I also asked my fellow board members not to hide behind the fact that because the policy was followed, we have to approve this. I want to remind the board that two years ago, three of you suspended a policy on a whim when a student director came forward with a recommendation to put some pieces of art in the school. The policy was not followed, and this board, I was not one of those, had no problem suspending the policy and doing something else because that was your desire. So really, if we're going to follow the policy, we follow it all the time, or we don't follow it at all. Now, this issue, uh, as we have seen tonight, um, we have seen for, for the last, I guess, uh, two years, um, been uh, very passionate. Um, and I respect these passions. But, but my question is, um, is this what we should have been spending our time on? I have really have read all the letters and emails received. I, I watch uh, parts of the forum. And, uh, and, and really feel that a lot of this is really uh, about emotions. Um, one of the things is that it seems to me that we're putting on trial a dead man that is not here to defend himself. Uh, a lot of the discussion has been focused on only one aspect of his life, that reading some of the materials that actually were distributed seems to be outside of historical context and um, using facts that are controversial uh, based on the information that I have received. I mean, there have been a lot of emails that say one thing and a lot of emails that say completely the opposite. Uh, I'm, I'm really not a historian, but uh, obviously there is a, a lot of controversy around the fact that uh, have been presented. And as one speaker mentioned, the fact is that we all have flaws, we all make mistakes, and the question is, are we just going to be judged on those? Uh, one of the speakers mentioned um, his admiration for Bill Clinton. Well, I also have a great admiration for Bill Clinton. I think Bill Clinton was a great president, and he did things I did not agree with. He, he signed the, uh, the Defense of Marriage Act. Um, there were other things, but I still think that Bill was a great president, and I love him, and I would love to honor him. People in the community have raised questions about flaws in the characters of Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Washington. Are those, are those schools um, going to be next? Um, and a lot of it, a lot of this, you know, is based on the fact that, you know, Jefferson owned slaves, something that I don't think anybody will say that was good. In fact, uh, that was a very disgraceful period in the history of our nation. But again, I sort of feel that by looking at this in isolation and out of context and without looking at his other actions, um, it's, it's not really fair. And I think that I'm not going to repeat what uh, Rob Browning said earlier, uh, but a lot of those questions uh, need to, to be ans um, uh, asked. Um, one of the things that sort of disturbed me was at the last board meeting, some people said that 
the kids have gone through Jefferson, and they remember Jefferson as the man who brought ice cream into this country. Uh, now, the other part of the community is going to remember Jefferson as the man who was evil because he owned slaves. And neither one of those uh, really does service to, to this man and, and what, what were his contributions uh, to this country. Uh, and, and I think that you know all of this could have been used as a, as a wonderful, uh, unbiased learning experience, and I really think that that opportunity uh, seemed to have been uh, missed. Um, I, I also want to echo a lot of the statements made by Director Isel at the last meetings. I'm not going to repeat those, uh, but I, I sort of feel a, a lot of what has come out has sort of been uh, inflammatory and. Um, being sort of like, you know, you're with us or you're against us. And I sort of want to quote uh, a letter that was in the um, Berkeley Daily Planet, the edition of June 17th to the 20th, that was in fact written by a Jefferson school teacher who says, um, why, why, are they, why are some board members uh, now suggesting violating their own policy process, something that is not correct? If they do, it will send a clear and racist message. So pretty much saying, if you don't agree with us, you're a racist. I sort of feel that this is really shameful uh, to have uh, something like this in public. And I really hope that this is not an example of what is really being taught in, in our classrooms. Uh, some claim that the, that the school needs a name that unites the school community. The fact is that all of this discussion, all of this passion shows that this has not done so. This community seems as divided as it was before, or maybe more. Um, we can look at, at the process uh, of Columbus. Uh, it was a much less controversial process. The school had gone through a lot of changes. They were ready for it. They had a new building. They were ready for a new name. And at the end of the day, the change in the name from Columbus to Rosa, uh, Rosa Parks helped improve student achievement. Well, the truth is that the answer is no. Um, and I sort of see this process that took place as a diversion from what should have been the real focus of this school community for the past two years, and that is uh, student achievement. Some people say that this was a wonderful lesson on, on the democratic process, that students learn a lot about the democratic process. But I, my question back is, what's the point of this if those students cannot read, write, or really do the math that is necessary uh, for them to be successful in life? Let's look at some of the statistics on student achievement. Uh, this school was the last school to adopt the literacy plan. By looking at uh, the API uh, growth from 1999 to the year 2003, which is the last year that the African American community had a statistically significant population at that school, this school has the second worst record, almost like for last, on improving the achievement on, of the African American students. And instead of using this energy that was used in this process for the last two years in engaging the community, uh, in developing a process to develop a plan to deal with the issue of um, the student um, closing the achievement gap, I sort of feel that this energy instead was used on this divisive debate over whether to change the name of the school or not because Jefferson owns slaves. And you know, and, you know, as a little editorial, I think this is the problem with uh, some of the uh, people who call themselves progressive in this community. There's a lot of focus on symbolism and uh, as opposed to actions that I think will really uh, make a difference. I think that you know, we really need to focus on what the real issues are. You know, why are the African American students at Jefferson not achieving as high as other um, African American students throughout the district? As one parent here mentioned, an African American parent, uh, why to many of them, to those families do not feel welcome at, at the school. Um, so um, I, you know, I even though I sort of um, feel that you know the energy should have been spent uh, in uh, other ways. Uh, right now, this is in front of us and. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I, I am going to be voting against this uh, because it really does not make rational sense to me. 
And really, uh, the truth is, I do not want to also, by changing this name, encouraging other school communities uh, to spend their time and energy, take it away from the issues that should be improving the achievement of all students, away from uh, so that they could change the name of the school if they find a flaw, and believe me, they will find a flaw because everybody has a flaw on the person after which their school was named. I know that um, what I say will be uh, subject to um, attack by uh, many people, uh, and I know that many people in this community will disagree with me, but um, I, that's the way I felt, and um, as my favorite, uh, you know, city council member Betty Olds uh, says, you know, you just have to speak what you feel like. So. Vice, Vice President Duran. Thank you. Um, I want to start off tonight by quoting an old journalism truism. Uh, don't bury the lead. For us journalists in the room, the lead. What do you believe? Put it up there up front. So the first thing I want to say is thank you, Jefferson community. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You've been a shining example of the best in Berkeley. You took a school board policy that has been in existence for over 30 years and you followed it to a T. You conducted a two-year process of discussion, debate, research, and a democratic secret ballot election that is a tribute to democracy. I only hope others will recognize your fine efforts. And I am happy and pleased to endorse your recommendation and vote to change the name of your school. Tonight's decision should not be about history. And I say that as a person on the board, maybe the only person on the board, that has a degree from Cal in American history. <laughs> oh, two of us, great. But again, this decision is not about history, but about how we respect our policies and our own community. We have directed and empowered a Jefferson community, or any school community for that matter, to be able to change the name of their school for any reason, if a majority so wishes. That is our policy. So how has this become so controversial? Our policy does not designate reasons for a change of a name. It just states that if 20% of the people designated in our policy sign a petition to consider a name change, a name change will be considered by that community. And that after this consideration of 50% of those empowered to decide vote to change the name, then we should change the name. It's not complicated or ambiguous. Follow the rules, be democratic and inclusive, and the name of the school will be changed. And our superintendent and staff have stated that is precisely what took place at Jefferson School. Now it's only happened three other times in Berkeley that I can remember in the last 30 years. And people did not come to the board and try and make an end around our policy and lobby the board directly to refuse to accept the recommendations. People don't take this policy frivolously, but very seriously. The Jefferson community reflects the full range of abilities and the attitudes that were expressed here tonight. We need to celebrate their actions, not criticize them, congratulate them on a job well done. They have shown us the best in our community, and we should welcome the results. On what basis should we make our decisions? That's the real question before us tonight. In matters like this, 
We don't make decisions in a vacuum. And it should have nothing to do with our personal opinions. We are here to follow our policies, not to be on some ego trip. We were not elected to change the name of schools or block the change of names of schools. We are elected, among other things, to set policies for the schools and to follow the existing policies. How else do you govern with integrity? Our policies on renaming facilities was adopted by the school board in 1972, reviewed by, by our community many times when other schools' names were changed, revised both in 1984 and 1999. And that's what this community had to deal with. I really believe the basic policy, philosophy embedded in this po policy that the school community make these decisions, cite decision making, and that the present stakeholders are the ones that should democratically decide just common sense and reasonable way to govern, in my opinion. We must decide who is most likely to give us the best advice on these delicate issues, and who best to give this advice the people most affected at the time, the students, the staff, and parents of a particular school. If community outreach is required, and I'm still unsure how much is necessary, it should, in my opinion, be solicited and given to the school community while it is in the process of trying to decide whether to change the name of the school or not. Again, community members coming to lobby the board, second-guessing, what a whole community has decided after long debate is definitely not the way in my mind. The process for changing the name of Jefferson School has been going on for over two years. All the people who came tonight in a sincere desire to lend their opinions in this debate should, in my, in my opinion, have been sent directly to the Jefferson community over the past two years so this designated group of decision makers could include these opinions in their deliberations. But for the board to now, after the fact, after our policy has been carried out by the Jefferson community, reject their recommendations defies my logic and flies in the face of our responsibilities to follow our policies. What message are we sending in this vote? What are each of us saying to the community and children if we disregard their decision after all their efforts in democracy? What will this tell our children if we don't accept the results of a secret ballot of election? So once again, thank you, Jefferson community. I presumed, President Riddle, you want to exercise your right to go last? That's our custom, although I thought we'd probably have some back and forth discussion. Oh, I would welcome that, but um, it's fine. I'll go ahead. Um, I made many comments last time, and I'm not going to repeat them. Could you speak more directly into the mic, please? Yes. I spoke um, quite extensively about this at the last meeting, and I don't want to repeat myself. Um, but I do want to comment on a few of the issues that have been raised tonight. Um, First off, to, to address the issue of the policy and um, the concerns raised by our PTA um, present and incoming PTA council presidents, um, uh, Wanda, especially you, you made a comment, I, I wish you'd be clear when our role is advisory and um, it'd be easier then to, you know, to. I do agree that it has been un that we have been unclear with the site about the advisory nature of their role in this process. I think it's rather implicit in the policy 
rather than e explicit. Um, but the fact is, and, and I myself was initially, um, it seemed to me that, that the role of the board was simply to ratify. But upon further consideration, um, it is, the board doesn't have, give away its authority, it hasn't given away its authority uh, to vote in this matter. In fact, the call for a public hearing uh, implies that we're going to listen to what is said and then deliberate and then vote. And this is as sacred a process in my mind and as important as the process that went on at the site. So I have joined with um, my fellow board members who are asserting their right and responsibility to deliberate and vote. Uh, and I'd be happy to come explain that to the children uh, at Jefferson School and the thinking behind that, regardless of the outcome of this vote. Uh, Lori Baumgarten, you said something tonight that really um, struck me. As a psychotherapist, you said I consider myself a healer, and I have been a psychotherapist in this community for over 35 years. You call this a symbolic act of reconciliation. For me, the idea of truth and reconciliation is extremely appealing. But in, my, in, in the core of my clinical being, in my working with families and individuals, this is not the path of either truth or reconciliation. And it, it, that is one of the primary reasons I am voting against this. I do believe that this process has been divisive it has created conflict. I cannot say that I think it's been good. I'm not idealizing this as some beautiful discussion that has taken place within the Jefferson community. I feel this has been destructive and that if we support this process, we will be encouraging, as Director Rivera pointed out, other schools to engage in this process, which seems to me to be distracting, destructive of the very trust that is at the core of what makes a school work, and that is the bond between parent, teacher, and student. I do not believe this process has furthered trust in this community, and I will not and cannot ethically, morally support it for that reason. Another issue which my, that's one of my key issues. The second key issue is the issue that this has been made about stripping Jefferson of an honor and recognition. I, I, I really fail. I think that the um, proponents of this petition really fail to actually appreciate the full contributions of Thomas Jefferson. Well, it is true that I am a US history major. I don't claim expertise on this subject, but it's very clear to me. You know how physicians have the statement, I, I can appreciate the appendix. That means they felt it, they know it's there. I do not hear in this discussion an actual appreciation of the significant contributions that Jefferson had made to this country is just astonishing to me. And when I suggest that people read um, a book by Roger Wilkins called Jefferson's Pillow, they tell me that they're in fact using this book to support their arguments at Jefferson School to strip Jefferson of his name. I had the good fortune to meet Roger Wilkins at an Education Trust conference where he spoke. His daughter works for the Education Trust, and the, 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 the conference was about a closing, closing the achievement gap. At that time, Roger Wilkins had just published his book, Jefferson's Pillow, and I had the opportunity to speak with him and have the book autographed. And all for the past several weeks and months that this has been going on, I've thought, what would Professor Wilkins say? Let me give you a little bit of his history. He's, first off, he's African American. Secondly, he served on the school board um, in Washington, D.C. 
He um, declined to accept a second term in 2003. He's past chairman of the Pulitzer Prize Board, professor at George Mason University. Um, he had a distinguished journalistic career, writing for the New York Times and the Washington Post, associate editor of the Washington Star, and while on the editorial page staff of the Washington Post, please listen carefully, he shared a Pulitzer Prize in 1972 for Watergate coverage with Woodward, Bernstein, and Herb Blatt. Um, among many of his public service activities, he served as past chair of the Board of Trustees of the African American Institute. He's a member of the board of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Um, He holds a law degree from the University of Michigan. He clerked for I can't remember one of our Supreme Court justices. It isn't in this particular biography. But I emailed him today, tardy though I was, with a little, you know, you put that exclamation point in the hopes that someone might read it and get it back to you. And I told him what this community was facing. And um, I, I said to him, curiously enough, your writings are being used by both sides on this debate. Would you like to weigh in? I sure could use your help. So he responded, and I would like to read you his response. And that will conclude my remarks for now. In my view, and this is a little bit long, but I, I think it's worth our time. In my view, it is not useful to try to try to wipe Jefferson's name off the school because he owns slaves. In order to live a sane life, we human beings need to face facts. For a long time, a huge proportion of white people couldn't face the clear fact that blacks were full human beings. Even now, there are whites who won't face facts. They want to white wipe the evils of slavery, lynching, and segregation out of history. That's just wrong. All of that is a huge part of, oh, wait a minute. That's just wrong. All of that is a huge part of who we are as a nation. And we need to remember all of the nooks and crannies of the past in order to be able to map enlightened paths to the future. Similarly, Thomas Jefferson and his life are huge facts in American history. Jefferson did own slaves, and there is strong evidence that he used one slave, Sally Hemings, sexually for many years. It is also true, in my view, that he cut and ran from President Washington's second term administration just when he was needed most. But there are other facts. Jefferson's soaring rhetoric has inspired struggles for freedom, including the black struggle, for more than two centuries. As president, he sent out the probe to find out how big America was and just what was out there in that vastness. He added enormously to our national bulk with a Louisiana purchase. History and human beings don't come in neat, conveniently consistent packages, unraveling them and considering all facets of people and of problems is what thoughtful citizens do, and it is what good schools ought to teach children to do. Therefore, I would keep Jefferson's name on the school and teach about him, warts and all. So will I, and so should this put an end to claims that a no vote is a racist vote, and that people who want this change are speaking for all African Americans. Thank you. Any more discussion or shall I talk a little bit? I'd really like to hear what you have to say. Yeah. I think a lot of people would. I'd really like to be somewhere else. Um, <laughs> I'm 
going to talk about a couple different things. And I don't have a beautiful, lovely speech prepared because I really did strive to keep myself open to community input on this until the end. And so what I have are pieces of a letter I sent out to the community, to people who'd written to me the last couple days, talking about things I've been thinking about. And I've added some stuff to them. So I apologize that it's not quite so smooth. Um, and I want to thank everybody who's written and called me and who's agreed to meet with me, um, who's knocked on my front door. And that did happen. Um, Someone came to my birthday party. Um, and this is a difficult decision for me. And I, I particularly thank those um, who challenged me and allowed me to frankly challenge them in return as I work to understand the different perspectives. And I appreciate that um, people I just met were able to do this and people I've known forever. And I think that speaks well of our community. I want to talk a little about the process first because it seems to be the cornerstone of some of the decisions here. Um, I do think that there is a lot of agreement that the policy and process needs to be reviewed. We have been reviewing our policies. We didn't get to this one yet. When the Jefferson issue came up, it did seem a bad time to start changing the policy because the minute we started doing that, we would be accused of siding with one side or the other. And so I think we left it alone, even though there were some things in it that were difficult. Um, I don't know if that was a good decision or not. I still think it was. Also, as far as the question of where have the board members been, my view and my read of the policy was that it was written in a way that a name change couldn't come top down from the board and it couldn't come from outside the community, but that it should come from within the community and be vetted and then it goes out to the greater community. And I, I chose not to micromanage at the, at the site level and I, uh, Vice President Duran and I did, did go to the final forum, and I was very careful not to express my final opinion because I was still trying to stay open to the greater community. And um, so going on with the policy, um, some of you felt and I think feel that the policy was completed once the school site voted. And some were surprised to learn that there were additional steps outlined in the policy. Others in the greater community were pretty <coughs> mad at us because they felt that they had an uh, inadequate opportunity to weigh in. Um, my belief is that the process, as it's written right now, does go beyond the community after it's voted. I think that's why we have the provision in the policy that makes it come to two separate board meetings. And it's why um, I worked with the superintendent to have a public hearing on this issue so that we can get input. Um, and then the policy finally comes to the board. And even a couple years ago when I first heard about that, um, I knew that this would be a difficult discussion. I knew it would be extremely difficult for me in particular because of my strong ties with Jefferson. But I do believe in the end, it's a board decision after we take input from the community that very carefully vetted this and after we've heard from the greater community over the last couple of weeks. Um, as far as what I heard from the greater community, um, I did hear from many students of Jefferson that have some, since left Jefferson. Um, when I talked to a lot of people, I got a lot of I don't care, don't you guys have something better to do? Um, and then we moved on to I don't care, Berkeley's crazy, this is embarrassing, why are you wasting your time? And I, I want to address that one while I'm on it. Um, I don't really care what people outside of Berkeley think about what we do here. Um, and I know this issue was extremely important to some good and caring people in our community. 
and I don't think anybody has a right to tell them that it's not an important issue and you're crazy for taking it on. Um, I'm also very glad I live in a community that does take up sensitive and complex discussions. We've chosen to live in this diverse community and we need to talk about race and history and values and inclusiveness, feelings and perspectives, and we don't all have to agree, but it's not okay to tell somebody their issues shouldn't be important to them or that you're crazy for even bringing it up. And although I think this issue has been very divisive to many at the Jefferson community, I do believe to some it's been a wonderful journey. Um, I think there's many viewpoints here about what happened at Jefferson and I don't think there's any right one. Um, going back to what I heard from the community, um, I did hear quite a bit of I don't really care, but you should follow your policy, and I do feel like we are following the policy all the way up into here tonight. Um, I, I did get a lot of calls. I went to Jefferson, and I love the song, and I don't want to change the name, and that's very sentimental, and I, I honor that, and I've worked to not have that bear into my own decision making tonight. Um, and then I've heard from a lot of neighbors and community members that they do care a lot about the name and they, they care very much that we do not change it. And I'm glad I had an opportunity to hear all those voices. Um, at the end of all this, you know, we got, we've gotten a lot of criticism about honoring the democratic process. Um, one person wrote me that to do otherwise would cause shame, not only on yourself, but on those who have fought and died for democracy. Again, I think we're performing democracy tonight. Um, like many of us, of you, my family, um, came from many different places. Um, some of my relatives were here before <coughs> the Europeans were here. Some of my relatives were Western Europeans. Um, my family did fight in the Revolutionary War. My family did fight on both sides of the Civil War. My family was slaughtered by people in the name of democracy. A lot of things come in here, but my belief is I have followed the democratic process here. Um, as far as Jefferson, again, I live near Jefferson. My kids attended Jefferson. Um, I'm probably not the best person to be making this decision here tonight but it wasn't a financial conflict of interest, so I do get to vote on it. Um, whew. I did appreciate getting to know new members of the Jefferson community, and um, again, I, I see that they've taken a journey, one that I've been able to have with people in this community at different times, a difficult one, but one that helped them better understand each other. And I appreciate the arguments about lowering barriers and increasing participation because that is one of the ties directly to student achievement and that's one of the most compelling arguments. Um, but I am greatly disturbed that many feel that this issue has divided their community and many have felt intimidated on both sides of this issue. The vote at the school was divided, and there are many that feel it, this will leave a scar on the school, no matter what we decide. Um, and I'm also kind of sad that so many people kept saying, no, we voted at the site, we don't, to me, that said, we don't need to hear from the wider community. And that didn't feel like the kind of inclusiveness that people were talking about. Um, and finally, I think we've talked a lot about history tonight, and I have a summer reading list. Um, and I've read about Jefferson over the years, and I, and I say that sincerely. I, I do intend to read more. Um, but our history and Jefferson himself was pretty complex and controversial. My own family history is complex and controversial. Uh, I do think it's appropriate to, appropriate to study them. I do think it's essential for our students to develop their critical thinking skills by embra embracing a complex study of controversial events and institutions and individuals. Um, I spent a lot of time in this community working to maintain and improve the diversity and equity of our schools. 
Uh, I've worked to broaden our notion of diversity. However, underlying this work has always been a strong notion that education is improved in a diverse and challenging atmosphere and that fostering critical thinking is an important part of preparing our children. So when I look at this, I have to say I do go back to when my kids started at Jefferson, their path was to be Jefferson, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., and then Berkeley High School. And the juxtaposition of those individuals, especially Jefferson and Malcolm X, because when my kids started, we were under the split system, they were going to go to both. That juxtaposition, I think, was something worth studying for the students. These were controversial men who contributed to our nation, indeed our civilization. And so in the end, and I, I think probably um, I've gone back and forth on my decision on this several times during the last few weeks. In the end, I just kept thinking about what we should be teaching our children and what they should be embracing in school. And I, I want them to study the lives of these complex men and use them not as perfect saints and not to be blindly celebrated, not to try to reconcile or apologize for them, but to use their lives to enhance their broad and critical thinking because I think they need it out in the world. And I'm sorry because I know no matter what I decide, I'm disappointing people I care about. But I can't approve this. More board comments. Student director. Um, I just want to um, uh, apologize for the students and the members of the community who may be offended um, after this decision. And um, upset about this decision. <coughs> More board discussion. Director Issel. Uh, I'm ready to vote. I, I, I think we're ready to vote. I'd like a roll. I'd like a roll call vote. Are we ready? We have a roll call vote. Yes. Starting with the student director and going down. Would you read the motion, please? Be motion, um, please, this is important to listen to. I, I want the motion read. Can you use a mic? Use a mic. Okay. Don't the feel vote, nervous. <laughs> the vote, vote is to. Uh, approve or deny the proposed name change for Jefferson Elementary to Sequoia Elementary School. No. No, no, no. no. Vice President Duran, I think yes. you made the motion. Yes. The motion before us is to accept the recommendation of the Jefferson community and change the name to Sequoia. Roll call vote, please. Student director? Aye. Director Issel? No. Vice President Duran? Yes. Director Rivera? No. Director Salaski? Yes. President Riddle? No. The motion? The motion fails. Three to two. We move on to Can our we eight take o'clock break. Specific. Can we take a break? Yeah, five, five minutes. minutes.
supposed to begin at 8 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> so we're just uh, less than two 